This video is brought to you by Professional Photographers of America. What's up, Miguel Quiles here, and today I'm gonna to share with you my top five best Sony lenses for portrait photography. There's some lenses on my list that probably aren't much of a surprise and some that you might not expect. Before jumping into the first lens on my list, I wanna cover a few things so that we're all on the same page. The lenses on my list are the ones that I've used in my own portrait work. With the exception of one of the lenses, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, I've used them for at least 40 to 50 professional photo shoots, minimum. I'm focusing this list to first party Sony branded lenses only. The main reason for that is that in my experience, using them in a variety of different situations, these lenses are gonna give me the most consistent results. Working as a full-time professional portrait photographer, consistency in results and performance is really important to me. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the first lens on my list, and that is the Sony 135mm f1.8 G Master lens. This focal length was one that I really missed having come from shooting DSLRs back in my early career. Having the ability to really isolate your subject and get this beautiful defocus background isn't something that I often do in my portrait work, but with this lens, it inspires me to actually want to do it more. With this being one of Sony's top of the line G Master lenses, it's no surprise to see that they've literally added everything in the kitchen sink to this lens. You've got dual front and rear XD linear motors, which makes the focusing on this lens really fast, accurate, and silent. Those are some of the traits that you're gonna hear more about in the rest of the list that I put together today, but getting back to the 135 GM, I love that it has a focus hold button and an aperture dial. It's a modern feature that I find myself using often. While the lens really shines for use outdoors, I really love using it for close-up studio portraiture. Every single time I take a photo and I zoom into the photo to do some pixel peeping, Man, it just takes my breath away. I've had some studio portrait and beauty sessions where this was the lens that lived on my camera for like 80% of the shoot. When you're getting amazing images like what you get from this 135 GM, it really squashes your motivation to put anything else on your camera. I could go on and on forever talking about how much I love this lens, but I have four other lenses that I have to talk about, so I'll just wrap this one up by saying that this might be my number one favorite portrait lens of all time. While the 135 GM lens is high up on my list, it isn't perfect in every situation. If you're limited in space, then you have to look for the right focal length to get the job done. That takes me to my second lens on the list, and that is the Sony 85mm f1.8 lens. Now, you might be pretty surprised to see this one in my list of the best Sony portrait lenses over and above the F1.4 G Master version, but let me explain. There's a few reasons that I oftentimes reach for this F1.8 lens, even though I also own the G Master 85. It's not a, a single thing, but more so a combination of features that make this one a no-brainer for me. First is the size and weight of the lens. The 85 1.8 comes in at 13.1 ounces, which is more than half the weight of the F1.4 G Master 85. It also focuses a lot faster in both outdoor and studio portrait situations, and it's deadly accurate using my typical portrait settings where I'm shooting with continuous wide area autofocus and IAF. The 85 1.8 is dust and moisture resistant as well, and it still offers you a focus hold button that comes in handy during portrait shoots. The overall performance of this lens is just fantastic, especially coupled with the fact that the lens is in that budget price range of $598 here in the US, compared to $1,798 for the F1.4 G Master 85. Of course, the 85 GM has a lot of great things going for it if you have the budget for it, mainly the faster aperture, the rugged build quality, and the aperture ring, but for me, I really only find myself using it when I need that, that f1.4 look. Um, since I'm shooting so much in the studio at f8 to f13, uh, the cheaper f1.8 lens gets the job done for me. Speaking of getting the job done, I have to take a moment to thank the sponsor for today's video. 
They've been a great friend and partner here on my YouTube channel, and they could be a really great resource for all of you out there as well. And that is Professional Photographers of America. I've been a member for some time and was introduced to them years ago when I needed general liability and equipment insurance. These are things that anyone wanting to make a career in photography will absolutely need, but they don't stop there. PPA also offers access to their educational content, professional certifications, as well as access to their super useful library of contracts. Anytime I'm looking for a model release or any sales and marketing tools, I can download them anytime via their website. You also get access to exclusive member discounts that can help you save money on the products and services you need most. Use the link in the description of this video to get $25 off your PPA membership. And now, back to my list. The next lens that I'm gonna talk about is one that is very new. Like, you can't even get one right now in stores at the time that I'm actually recording this, but I can promise you, it's going to be one that most portrait photographers are going to want to own. This is the 50 millimeter F 1.2 G Master lens. Now I've used a variety of 50 ish millimeter lenses over the years. Uh, Sony has the 50 millimeter F 1.4 planar, the 55 1.8 sonar, all of which I've owned and used a bunch. But what sets this lens apart from those is really adding some of that special sauce that makes the 135 GM so special. Unlike other 50 millimeter F 1.2 lenses that I've owned in the past, this one focuses insanely fast and is just stupid sharp when you're shooting at that F 1.2 aperture. They added two focus hold buttons to this lens along with the aperture ring and it is of course dust and moisture resistant. I'm typically not a 50 millimeter shooter when it comes to taking portraits, but after using it for a variety of shoots these past few weeks and seeing how well this lens performs, I'm really motivated and inspired to take it out and use it some more. Every time that I've used it, the performance of this lens keeps reminding me so much of that 135 GM, which I've already told you how much I love. It's fast, it's sharp wide open, it's lightweight. There's really so much to love with this lens. Sony has literally put in every single bit of their lens making prowess and made a 50 millimeter lens that I believe is gonna go down as one of the greats. Moving right along to the fourth lens on my list of the best Sony portrait lenses, and that is the 24 millimeter F 1.4 G Master lens. This one might be a bit of a surprise for some of you that watch my content or follow my work on social media. It's not one that you see me using in my shoots all that often, but Part of the reason for that is that the majority of the videos that you're watching here on my channel are actually being filmed with the 24 G Master on my camera. I really love using the 24 millimeter focal length anytime I'm wanting to incorporate the environment in my portraiture. And even though the lens is wide, it gives you a really beautiful quality of bokeh when you're shooting wide open, thanks to that close minimum focus distance. It's another one of those Sony lenses that has all the bells and whistles like their fast and silent focusing system, three ED glass elements that help to suppress chromatic aberration and flaring, and of course the focus hold button and the aperture ring that I love to use on my portrait lenses. Pretty much any time I'm planning to take some street portraits or when I go out with my family, this is the lens that I am reaching for. It's lightweight so I'm not really too worried about carrying it around all day. And I can rely on it to give me gorgeous results consistently in pretty much any situation. One of these days, I might even buy a second one of these lenses just so that I can have one to shoot video and have another for me to use in some of my portrait videos. So far, all of the lenses that I've talked about are prime lenses, and that's mainly because they tend to give you the sharpest results and the nicest bokeh when you need to shoot at those wide open apertures. The thing is that sometimes you really want to shoot quickly and get a wide range of focal lengths without having to carry a bunch of lenses. As a matter of fact, if you were to ask me which lens I would recommend if you could only own one, this next one would definitely be it. This is the Sony 70 to 200 F 2.8 G Master lens. This is one of the OG G Master lenses, and it's really one of the very best portrait lenses that you can get for Sony cameras. 
The 70 to 200 millimeter focal length basically has all of my favorite focal lengths that I like to use when I'm shooting studio or location portraits, mainly being 70 millimeters, 85 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 135 millimeters, and 150 millimeters. The image quality shooting at any aperture on this lens gives you that, that top shelf pro quality that one would expect at this point from a $2,500 lens. It has built-in steady shot, which helps a lot when you're hand holding this lens. And it really gives you as close to prime lens quality that you can get, but within a telephoto lens. If you took away all of my lenses and you asked me to keep only one to do my professional work, this one would definitely be the one that I would pick. So why don't I use it all the time then? I think I could chalk up that answer to one word. Laziness. <laughs> you see, while the lens is ultra versatile, giving you all of those different focal lengths, it also weighs in at 3.26 pounds. That may not sound like a lot, but when you're out shooting for hours, you'll definitely start to feel it in your neck and your shoulders. For my own portrait photography work, I tend to use it on a tripod whenever I possibly can, and I found it to be worth the extra effort in using it when I might need a variety of different focal lengths. These are my top five best Sony portrait lenses, and I'm curious to hear what your top five list is. Let me know in the comment section and let me know if you agree with my list. If you like this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you hated it, hit the thumbs up button twice. <laughs> Consider subscribing to my channel if you're into portrait photography as I release new videos here all the time. Now, if you wanna learn some of my favorite portrait techniques, check out the video that you see here on the screen. See you there.